welcome to this next episode of the uv sphere bedroom chats i'm harshit kolte i'm product marketing manager here at vmwareby.com uh, and i'm on, i work on the team that's responsible for v sphere core and also for v sphere foundation um this is the third session in our breakroom chat series on bvf um and as a reminder and in these breakroom chats we bring either our partner experts or broadcom uh, experts and talk about our favorite products um today uh, we will be talking with uh, katrina brookfield uh, katrina welcome to this chat uh, we have presented on several uh, different sessions together it's always great to have you uh, why don't you give a, a quick intro about yourself well thank you so much for having me and hello uh, i'm katrina brookfield i'm a product marketing engineer at broadcom i've been with the company for a little over 2 years now and I really focus on bringing VI admins closer to the world of DevOps and Kubernetes and everything that comes with that and the overall, you know, consumer experience. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Um, and another reminder, and we were just joking about this a minute ago, um, as a part of this uh, series, we talk about our favorite drinks. This is my third. So my first one was a Flaming Lamborghini. My second one was a Mango Mojito. This is my third favorite. My third favorite drink is uh it's alcoholic uh, it's it's tequila sunrise and i really love it it's summertime i love orange juice i love tequila um, and that uh, sunrise experience with grenadine you know it just is appealing so that's one of my favorite drinks although it's not the time for it it's only uh, 10 a.m here how about you well i i like to keep it simple with a glass of prosecco that's <laughs> that's my favorite <laughs> simple is uh, keep it simple and uh, stupid huh <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right. So let's jump into today's topic. So, um, you know, when we had the when, uh, six months ago, we had the acquisition VMware by Broadcom. We went through a um, uh, simplification of the portfolio, and as a part of that, we have now only two main products: vSphere Foundation and um, VMware Cloud Foundation. Um, but the focus or and the strategy behind that was to give a more more concentrated uh, set of um, products for uh, private cloud. And also we also had another focus on cloud-like experience. And you know, that's a broad, very broad term, cloud-like experience and you know, cloud operating model and so on. What does that mean to you? And what does that mean to our customers, that cloud-like experience on-premises? So when I think about cloud-like cloud -like experience, um, I think of something that's fast, efficient, has a lot of capabilities, but at the heart of it really is self-service that removes the barriers between you know, various teams or personas. Um, and traditionally, when we look at kind of the personas that interact with this, uh, we have kind of two sides. So on one side, you would have your consumers and this can be anybody who's using the platform and they want to use the self-service, they want to deploy the workloads that they want really fast without you know, having to open a ticket or wait a long time for somebody to do it for them. But they also want to use the tools that they prefer. They want to be able to uh, access all of these additional services that you would need for your platform. So they have a lot of requirements and they want to have it, you know, at their fingertips mm -hmm. very quickly. But on the other side, you still have your admins and they need to keep control of the platform. You know, they need to be the ones who still set some quotas and policies, they ensure some governance uh, and define permissions. So we really need to cater to both sides of the equation here. Awesome. Great. No, it makes sense. Uh, not having to depend on IT. We have heard that repeatedly for, from our customers. They want that, uh, that self-service. Um, and organizations should really focus on their core skills, right? They shouldn't become a, you know, a big IT shop. Uh, they need to support innovation on their own products and IP. So it, all, it definitely makes sense. So you mentioned self-service yes, and access to you know infrastructure. Um, and that by itself can be a very broad statement, right? What does really an organization new, need to enable all of this for their, like you said, consumers? Well, first of all, you need the infrastructure to run everything on, right? Um, and that's our vSphere. Um, but to deliver that kind of cloud-like experience with self-service, what we have done is that we have embedded this declarative API directly into vSphere. And that enables something that we call the vSphere as control plane. 
Now, what VCR's control plane um, delivers to our customers is set of IS services that allow them to deploy their virtual machines using VM service, but also to deploy Kubernetes clusters, to run containers on using TKG service. And it also expands the platform with additional capabilities and services using something that's called supervisor services. Mm -hmm. So some examples of that would be, for example, almost every organization that, that is operating uh, this kind of model will need a private container registry. So we have Harbor offering for that. Or for example, if you need a specific ingress controller, we can deploy Contour. So those would be those additional capabilities that we can also provide on our platform. But also what's really important is that because all of this is integrated with v its vSphere, it is also integrated with the underlying infrastructure, meaning also hardware. So for example, we are able to deploy persistent volumes using the storage service, or also deploy native load balancers using the network service. Um, so what this platform allows our customers to do is to run all of their workloads on one platform using the same set of tools and management using and having this really unified management experience. And one of the recent things that we have also added is something that we call local consumption interface, where we have really made this even simple for even simpler for our customers. And we have enabled this directly in the vSphere client. So customers now get a really nice and simple to use user interface as well. Absolutely, absolutely. So, I mean, just as a reminder for everything you made, uh, say, uh, you said makes sense. I just wanted to remind the audience that we, so we, we mentioned in our previous series, vSphere, we talk a lot about vSphere. vSphere is an inherent part of vSphere foundation and we cannot forget that some of the platform benefits we get from vSphere are exposed in vSphere foundation and that's one of our key value props. Um, coming back specifically, so you mentioned a little bit about the vSphere IaaS control plane um, and um, the local consumption interface. Now we are going to have a, a, one of our latest releases of VVF is coming out. What are some specific, you know, features that you would like to call out in vSphere Foundation that help address these? Mm -hmm. well, one that I'm really, really excited about, um, uh, and one I would like to highlight, um, is around the changes we have done with TKG service. Mm -hmm. So in our latest release, we have introduced something we call independent TKG service. But what that means is that we have decoupled it from vCenter. Now, this is really important in two parts. The first part for our customers, it's even easier to manage because they will be able to uh, update the service to later versions uh, without having to update the vCenter itself, which is great. But on the other hand, what this will allow us to do is to deliver newer versions of Kubernetes faster than ever before. Um, it's really making the process better for all of us. Um, and recently we have actually delivered two new Kubernetes versions to our platform. And for the first time ever, we have uh, completely aligned with upstream Kubernetes, which is a major milestone for us. So it's really exciting for us and our customers as well. Yeah, our customers can be true Kubernetes shops, right? They don't have to wait six months or a year, or whatever for the next vSphere uh, version of that release. How about some additional, exactly. you know, my other uh, 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 enhancements also that are um, being exposed in VVF? Just to mention a few, uh, we have also introduced auto scaling for Kubernetes clusters with Cluster Autoscaler. We have also expanded um, uh, configuration options for VM service VMs with VM class configuration. We have also implemented um, automated certificate rotation for supervisor, which was something that, again, we're, we're trying to make the operational burden of this as, as easy as possible, the management as easy as possible. Um, and yeah, just to name a few. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, no, that's a very good way, right? We got a, a sampling of uh, a, a quick, you know, for our audience, um, a list of features that they can refer to. Um, if you had to leave our audience with, you know, two, three, you know, main key takeaways, what should they remember from our our, our chat? Okay, um, how to summarize this? Uh, the <laughs> VCRS control plan, it's a really comprehensive solution that integrates the best of vSphere infrastructure and workload management with these additional IS uh, offerings that allow our customers to deploy 
all of their workloads, whether it's virtual machines, containers, or Kubernetes clusters, all in one place using the same set of tools and also integrating with the best in class storage and networking solutions. And really from not only deploying this, but making going back to the cloud-like experience and the consumer experience that they get, trying to make this really, really simple with uh, providing user interfaces directly within the vSphere client that they have known and loved for decades. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Comprehensive, complete, integrated. I mean, I love it. Awesome. Uh, with that, I think we are coming uh, to a close. Uh, uh, Katrina, that was very, uh, uh, you know, the good bites, uh, uh, but it still explains a lot of uh, our strategy as well as some of the new features that are coming in. Uh, thanks for taking the time to join me on this break room chat. Well, thank you very much for having me. It was good talking to you and I awesome. hope to see you soon. So uh, thank you again, Katrina, for coming and joining us here. Um, love this conversation. Uh, we want to keep on doing this for, for our audience uh, and touch on the different topics every time. Uh, so with that, we are coming to the end of the episode, folks. Uh, if you like this episode and if you think there is value and please uh, send us uh, notes on what you would like to see in these. But uh, this is Harshit Kolte and Katrina. We are signing off. Um, bye till next time.